Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. I've been away from painting for a little while, but it's time to get back into it. And what better way to start than with one of my favourite miniatures from my collection right now, Orko from Masters of the Universe Battleground. For this miniature, I want to try and approximate the colour scheme from the Filmation series, but I'm not going to stress too much about getting it exact, and the colours will end up a little bit darker, with a little more shading, just to make sure the miniature doesn't get lost on the tabletop during games. So I've sourced an image of Orko online as he appears on the show, and I'm using that as a guide. I'm not really sure about this wand though. I don't know when the wand became a thing. I know his original toy didn't have a wand, it had a zip cord and a little magic trick, and I don't recall him using a wand in the original series or mini comics, or at least not that often. Maybe it was something that became more of a thing from the 2002 reboot. Regardless, I found a few different images of the wand, but the simplest option seems to be to go with a solid gold finish. Anyway, before starting, I have taped the flying stem so it doesn't get paint on it, and I have spray undercoated with ghoul grey from Colorforge. Going with grey will keep the model lighter than undercoating with black, but without the risk of red looking a bit pinky, which can happen when undercoating in white. Let's get started. First of all, we're going to use Abaddon Black just to paint in Orko's face area. I'm going to try to be neat here, but it doesn't matter all that much. With that done, we can move on to the scarf, which my eyes tell me is lilac, but might be more of a very light pinky purple colour. I don't have anything close to it in my paint collection, so I'm going to mix one part Calgar Blue with one part Screamer Pink and three parts White Scar. The result is something pretty close, so I'm going with that. Once that's dry, I want to do a little shading, but nothing too heavy, so I'm going to use some Army Painter Purple Tone, thinning it down quite a lot. After that wash is dry, you can do a highlight on the scarf if you want to, reapplying the base colour, but I'm going to stop at this point. Next we want to do the hat. To approximate this colour, I'm doing a simple mix of 50-50 Evil Sun Scarlet with Pink Horror. One thin coat of that for the base, and then I'm going to thin down some Caraburg Crimson and apply that as a wash to give a bit more definition to the hat's folds. With the wash dry, we can reapply the same base colour again to the raised areas just to brighten them back up. If you want to, you can progressively add lighter tones to the hat for even more highlights, but I am sure a lot of you know I like to keep things pretty simple and straightforward here, so I'm not doing that. Next we have to do the coat. This is more of a dark burgundy purple tone, so we're going to use three parts Screamer Pink with two parts Evil Sun Scarlet. We're going to apply a single thin coat of that as a base, and once we have that base coat down, we are gradually going to add Pink Horror to our mix, and we're going to use that to do progressive highlights, making the mix lighter and lighter with each new application. You want to keep these highlights thin, you want to try and blend them as much as possible, and again, as with other highlighted areas, you can go as far as you want with the highlights. Personally, I went for three additional layers. Orko's pale blue grey skin is going to be quite easy. We're going to use a base coat of wolf grey from Army Painter. Of course, you can use Fenrisian grey from Citadel if you prefer. This is going to go on the hands and the ears. Once that coat is dry, we're going to do a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade for the recess shading, just to help make those details pop. This is followed by a highlight of wolf grey, just to brighten up the raised areas again. Continue to add lighter shades if you want to, depending on how detailed you want to be. Next we are switching to Avalon Sunset. We are going to thin this just a touch, and then use it to dot in the circles of Orko's eyes. We just have to be a bit careful here, we don't want to get yellow on any of the surrounding areas. Then we switch to Abaddon Black. We are going to thin this down and carefully paint the O on Orko's chest. We need to be really careful here, otherwise we are going to have to mix up the colour for Orko's coat again to tidy up any overpainted areas. We are also going to use Abaddon Black to very carefully dot in Orko's pupils. Fortunately, these are sculpted on the miniature, so it's not too difficult to hit them with the paint without splodging it everywhere else. We are nearly done except for that wand. I'm going to keep this very simple. First we are using Liberator Gold. I'm not worrying about thinning this, it's just going to go straight on the wand. And then once that's dry, we can switch to Seraphim Sepia. 
This will give us some light shading without being too overpowering or muddying up the gold too much. After that, we can switch back to Liberator Gold for a final highlight on the raised surfaces of the wand. This will keep it nice and bright and shimmery. And that's Orco finished, and I'm pretty happy with that. I haven't hit the colour tones from the television show exactly, but I think they are close enough, and those colours will also be bold enough to stand out on the table. Of course, we still have to paint the base. Fortunately, I didn't glue the flying stem into the base, so I can remove Orco to make this final step easier. We're going to start with a base coat of Xandri Dust. This is a nice light beige sort of colour that should work quite well for this flagstone design. We will do one solid coat of that, and then when it is dry we are going to switch to Agrax Earthshade. Yeah, you didn't think I would make it all the way through a painting video without a bit of Agrax, did you? Well, this is just going to go over the whole base, making sure we get plenty in those deep recesses to darken them up, as we didn't start with a really dark base colour. With that done, we're going to do some highlighting, starting by reapplying Xandri Dust. We aren't going to apply this flat over the whole of the flagstones, instead we are going to focus on the edges and corners and leave patches of the wash showing. We're trying to be a little bit sketchier here. Gradually, we will add some Screaming Skull to the Xandri Dust, and we're going to build up these scratchy highlights in nice thin layers. Two or three layers should be plenty. And if you really want to, you can finish with a final edge highlight of Screaming Skull, but I didn't do that. After that, we're switching to Abaddon Black to paint the little arrow on the front of the base. These arrows are there to determine the miniature's front arc. I would rather they weren't there, but obviously I appreciate it's a concession to gameplay over aesthetics. And then we can use some Steel Legion Drab to colour the rim of the base. And with that done, we are actually finished and we are ready to spray varnish this miniature. And here is what we have. I'm pretty happy with that. This was the first thing I painted after getting my new glasses, and it was a bit of a struggle. I felt like I had to relearn how to paint, and I messed up quite a few shots when the miniature gradually moved out of the frame as I worked. But I got there in the end. Onwards and upwards. And that is that. Thank you to all of you who have already chosen to join the new Always Bored Never Boring Members Club. And if you haven't, do please check it out through the join button below. And thank you to everybody for taking up some of your valuable time listening to me. If you like the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.